Welcome once again to the Bobby Kremen Show, along with Coach Kremens. I'm Nate Ross, your host, for another great week of Cougar basketball. You know, Coach, we all read the book, or we're supposed to read the book in college, The Tale of Two Cities. <laughs> Last week's A Tale of Two Halves, very different halves up at Davidson, and then against Wofford, a good first half, but a great second half here at home. You know, Nate, I, I love college basketball. I follow it, and I see these teams. That, that, you take Michigan State, for example, and, you know, I watch Connecticut, Syracuse. Syracuse lost four in a row and they win at Connecticut. It's a journey. And you know, you have, the, you have the upward spirals and you have the downward spirals. And when you get on that downward spiral, you gotta get off of it somehow. And you gotta get that arrow going back up. We played a, a good Davidson team who has been struggling. Of course, we know Bobby McKillop's a great coach. We played a very good first half. I thought we were in control. And then we completely fell apart and Davidson put on a show. We had to come home, Nate. We in a little bit of a downward spiral. We had a tough first half, but we had a great second half against defending champion Wofford. So it, it's up and down, Nate, but we want to keep it going up. Well, two good games this week for the Cougars, and we'll look at the highlights of those games right now. Well, again, Nate, you know, you know, I have great respect for Davidson, and you know, when I came back to coaching, they see a good pass ahead, nice three by our sophomore from England, Andrew Lawrence. Look at Trent Wiedemann. Like a point guard handling the ball. Uh, but, you know, of course, Davidson, the, for my first three years here at the College of Charleston, they were a dominant team. They see Godlock and that patented pull-up jumper. And, Nate, I feel great right now. I feel like the, the Cougars are a focus. We're taking care of business. Look at that move by Simmons. And, um, you know, I, I, like, I like where we are. <clears throat> Keep moving the ball. There's Godlock again. And when he gets it going, you know how I feel. Very hostile crowd. Tough place to play up right. there in Belk Arena. Um, they had, they had the, what they call a whiteout, which we had the next game after this here <laughs> at the, the, the college. Uh, but again, you know, it's just right before the half. And look at Wiedemann uh, just playing some really good basketball, the freshman. Now, now we go to the second half. And look at this. Boom. <laughs> Now, Nate, we're in great shape. And obviously, you know, we try and show some good things on the highlight, not the bad things. Um, and all of a sudden, Nate, we, it's turnover city. And it's a shame. because Look at that pass. It's a shame because we were in control of this game. And, you know, we know what type of attitude Davidson has and, again, what type of coach Bobby is. And Davidson never gives up. And that young man, Cochran, they started hitting threes. They started hitting threes right in, right in um, Antoine's face. But Drew comes back with a uh, missed shot. And there's Simmons inside. And we're still in pretty good shape. And this is Kuhlman for another three for them. <laughs> yeah. See, right, Antoine's right there and just goes right over him. And, you know, obviously Antoine needed to push out on him. Now, Davidson, you can feel the momentum changing. That was Jake Cohen. Jake Cohen's a very good. And look at look at Davidson. Look at them fighting back. Now they they were struggling in the conference, and they're a lot better than their record. God locks them back with a big jumper. We got we got a heck of a game going on right now. But Nate, this place and this is a big three by our freshman Wiedemann. You can see Davidson took control of the game. The fans were going nuts, and uh, this is a big play here. And all of a sudden, you know, we're right back in it. That was goaltending. And Davidson's going to come down and score. We come back. You see Godlock. Bingo. Now it's a tied game with, um, you know, four and a half to go. And that's a shot that killed it's us. Jake Cohen again. And that was big. Uh, you know, we Jeremy Simmons had to help out on a ball screen. And again, all of a sudden, Davidson is feeling it. And the crowd's going crazy. And they're going to go on for a, a great home victory. They see Godlock again driving, swinging the ball. That's good ball movement. Yeah, Andrew Lawrence. That's really good ball movement. Uh, we hung in there, Nate, but, you know, we didn't feel good after the game because um, we felt like uh, in the second half when we had control of the game, we just felt like it got away from us. And, again, you got to give Davidson a tremendous amount of credit for the way they played the second half. Now we come home. You come home after a tough loss, and you really put it together. Good first half, and we'll see the second half at home. A great second half. Yeah, um, great shot by Willis Hall. Uh, I love when he's hitting shots. But, you know, Nate, you know, when you come off a loss, you always sometimes question. He's a nice pass, Monroe. 
uh, to Godlock. You always question yourself. And again, just, you know, we talked about the respect we have for Davidson. And um, this team here, defending champ, there you see our out of bounds play underneath. Um, really well executed. Great pass by Antoine Wiggins to our freshman. Guys are sharing the ball well. We, this is the, the second whiteout game. <laughs> <laughs> We're back to back Back to back uh, whiteout games. I don't understand any of that stuff, but <laughs> as long as it, all I know is this there's a lot of it. Davidson had a lot of enthusiasm. And uh, we have a lot of enthusiasm. Well, the student section was filled 30 minutes before the game even that, started, that, which that, is great here. That, that's fantastic. Uh, look at our, uh, our sophomore, Andrew Lawrence. A loose ball. Godlock's going to get it. Passes ahead. Look at Wiggins on a, a beautiful finish. But again, <clears throat> you know, like Davidson, Wofford, uh, they know how to win. Look at that. Look at that pass. And we all know who that young man is. Um, Noah, should, Noah Dahlman. They should call him Layup Dahlman. Yeah, That's all he gets is layups. That's a great name for him, Layup Dahlman. He is he's one of the smartest basketball yep. players I've ever coached against. He is so clever, and he's great around the basket. Godlock comes through like he always does with a big jumper. And Nate, now the momentum, like the Davidson game, the momentum has changed. Ninth block by Wiedemann, but the momentum has changed, and you can just feel it. Tough, not a good shot. We get fortunate. Simmons gets the rebound. And I want to say Simmons here, um, he had not practiced uh, after Davidson because of some serious bruised ribs. And I really admire Jeremy for, for playing in this particular game. But Wofford gets back in. We're in trouble right here. Big three. Nice pass. Uh, I love the assist there. And in this particular game, Drew Godlock had, I think, his season-high career assist. He had eight assists. To go along with the 20, uh, 25, I 25 think, yeah. points. Leading eight. scorer leads you in assist. That's got to be a plus. I, I love it. I love it. They see Godlock on a little post-up play we have, and he's so clever. Look at that <laughs> shot. That's what we call his famous floater. And here we go, second half. Well, now now it gets serious. Um, I, I told look at a, that's great uh, offensive rebounding by Antoine Wiggins. But uh, we come out, and this guy, like always, look at that pass. See, that, that's what he has to do. People are keen. And our freshman, Wiedemann. Uh, but, Nate, we play one of our best second half of the season. Antoine Wiggin gets involved. Donovan Monroe starts shooting again. And, of course, this guy is always, always playing. See the pass? See the shot? Now, that's what we need, Nate. That, I can't say enough about that. Look at the pass there. Now, now all of a sudden, it's just not Godlock. It's Wiggins. Yep. It's Hall. And, and that's what we need. And here comes Donovan. And that, you see, now this this is the real team. And I really think it was key, correct me if I'm wrong, great defense. I mean, yes. you just get beat on the, didn't get beat on yeah. the dribble. Yeah, now we get a loose ball here. Godlock flushes it. And, um, you know, we got to go now. And, and it kind of like Davidson against us. Yep. Crowds into it. Weed him in on a reverse layup. And um, we, we just feel good, Nate. And we're going to go on for a great uh, home victory. Well, Coach, it's now time for the AT&T Play of the Week, and this week it is Trent Wiedemann, a freshman who is really maturing and becoming a very good basketball play player. It comes from the first half of the Davidson game. With Davidson in a full-court press, you can see a great play by Trent Wiedemann to Jeremy Simmons for the dunk and a three-point play. A little emotion, a little excitement for the Cougars on the road at Davidson. Not too many six foot eight point guards, but Trent comes down, gives it to Jeremy Simmons, and avoids the charge. A very good and very smart basketball play. At Davidson for the dunk and the three point play by Jeremy Simmons. Assist Trent Wiedemann, our AT&T Play of the Week. AT&T covers 97% of all Americans. Rethink possible.
Welcome back to the Bobby Crimmins Show. This is Cougar Conversation brought to you by Coca-Cola. No, Nate Ross is not here today. It's my show with Marcus Hammond. I'm taking over. And I'm with the senior college of Charleston point guard, Donovan Monroe. How you doing, Donovan? I'm good, man. I'm good. All right, now, when I was a red shirt junior and a senior at the College of Charleston, you were a freshman and a sophomore. And I heard every old joke in the book. How does it feel to be the oldest <laughs> player on the team nowadays? <laughs> you I get mean, a lot of old jokes from the guys? Yeah, I am, considering my, today is my birthday. And um, I've been getting called, oh, how old are you? 30? 30 years old? 28? 28 today? But um, I'm 23, so I guess all the, all the jokes I was giving Marcus, I'm getting it now, so it's all good. All right, we joke a lot about being old, but um, I went to Brewster, you went to Fort Union, and uh, a lot of times when things get crazy out there on the court, we were kind of the guys that kind of settle down and kind of keep everything at a balance, be kind of solid. A lot of that has to do with going to prep school and having that extra year. So kind of explain how that maturity kind of like gave you the natural leadership and uh, maturity role coming in with your freshman class. Um, I think I think with me going to Fork Union, um, it kind of it, it kind of gave me the idea that I need to like take things into my own hands when stuff is getting bad, and um, just having the discipline to like tell my teammates to calm down, stuff like that, or um, you know, basically just guiding us when when times get tough, and um, just being the leader. I know Coach Kremer talk about me being the leader out there, and uh, with me going to Fork Union, I think that gave me a lot of a lot of recognition of be, of, of how to be a leader, and um, you know, just just basically just guide my teammates, the freshmen, the sophomores, and even sometimes the seniors. The seniors can get out of hand sometimes. Yeah, they, they do get kind of out and, of um, hand sometimes. <laughs> and then basically it's just, it's just me just kind of guiding them and just kind of talking to them at, at times out there on the court and just letting them know, like, hey, we got this, man. Just calm down. We got this. Um, let's come out here. Let's give it everything we got. Just um, just stay focused. Stay focused. Yeah. A lot of talk around the SOCON and around Charleston this year was if you stop Andrew Gallock, you can shut down the whole team, which is it's kind of crazy because, you know, you have Jeremy, he, he surpassed 1,000 points this year. You surpassed 1,000 points this year, and congratulations, by the way, for joining that 1,000-point club. But kind of tell us how it feels to kind of prove everybody wrong and show them that Andrew Gallock is not the only one on the team, though he is a great player. Uh, I mean, Andrew, I mean, taking nothing away from Andrew, he, like you said, he's a great player, a great scorer. And um, I don't mind passing him the ball as well. And, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, with, with me and Jeremy, we're kind of the, the three scenes. And I mean, me and Jeremy, we know what we can do. We've been in this system for four years now. Right, right. And um, we kind of know the system, which we know the system very well and what Coach Cummins want. And um, but it's like I said, I mean, it's just, it just comes from within with knowing what we can do, um, knowing if Andrew not going, we can still do other things. Right. And um, Basically, Jeremy, he's an inside player, so I mean, most of the time it's, it's either Jeremy, you just got to score, man, you, and then you got to score. And um, I mean, Andrew, Andrew, he is a good player, and um, I mean, but it's also good to have me and uh, Jeremy also to help him out as well. All right, now that we got all that out the way. All right, last year LeBron came down. Anybody that's ever <laughs> bumped shoulders with Donovan knows he's the biggest LeBron fan ever. All the players said you were trying to Facebook him and take him to kick and chicken and, uh, and tweet him. Nah, I'm joking about that, but uh, what do you think about the decision and LeBron? I mean, because Kobe wouldn't have left or Mike wouldn't have left, but yeah. you being a LeBron fan, how do you feel about that? I mean, I was shocked. I was shocked. Um, actually, I thought he was going to end up somewhere like Chicago or something like that. But uh, LeBron is my man. He's my favorite player besides Michael Jordan. <laughs> um, so just, let's just get that out there. And, and I do not like Kobe Bryant. <laughs> but um, I was shocked. And um, when LeBron came here, man, it was like a dream come true. Um, like, just meet my favorite player. I mean, I watch him all the time. And um, basically, when I'm watching NBA basketball, I'm kind of watching him. And um, it was just an experience, man, something I'll never forget. And I can tell my kids um, that I met LeBron James. And they had, actually had a, had a conversation with him. But um, it was a real nice experience, man, something I'll never forget. That's good. I mean, you kind of sound like a groupie right now. But I just want to get I mean, that. It, it, it is what it is, man. <laughs> Best player in the league. It is what it is. All right, a lot of college Charles fans don't know that you're an outstanding football player. Uh, in high school. Kind of tell us, like, do you still have any kind of dreams or aspirations to play if you, you know, happen to don't play basketball next year? Or would you think about joining the combine or trying to give it a shot? Uh, I mean, it's in the back of my mind. Um, but I mean, most of the time, I'm basically focused on basketball right now. I know football is a brutal sport. And um, not everybody has it. But I mean, for me to, um, to say that, I mean, I have to get back in shape, um, get stronger. But I mean, it's always in the back of my mind, though. All right, is Coach Kremen still running around yelling out, Donovan, he, he's my John Havlicek. He's always, my John Havlicek. Always, always, <laughs> always. He's always saying that. But um, Coach Kremen, he's my man. He's a good coach. 
I like him a lot and I respect him a lot. Coach Krim is a very good coach. Well, we appreciate it, Donovan Monroe. Thank you. Thanks for having you on Cougar Conversation today. Don't change that dial and come right back. We'll be more with the Bobby Krim Show. Welcome back once again to the Bobby Kremen Show. And after that Cougar conversation, I got to be in trouble. Marcus Hammond did a heck of a job <laughs> with that interview. A former great player here, of course, at the College of Charleston. Uh, now it's time to look at next week's opponents and a look around the NCAA brought to you by our friends at Piggly Wiggly. Coach, we just had a great game against Wofford from the upstate. Now Furman comes into town to play right here. Nate, not, not only Furman, but uh, Elon, you know, yep. every year in, in every conference you have a, you know, what, was, what is a surprise team in your conference? And, um, and right off my bat, you know, Jeff Jackson's uh, Furman Paladins come into mind. And then, of course, um, um, uh, Matt Matheny, uh, uh, a former assistant for Bobby McKillop at Davidson. Uh, he's done a great job at Elon. So, uh, you know, Jeff, Matt. John Schumann uh, from UTC Chattanooga, uh, they deserve some serious consideration for coaches of the year in our conference. But Furman, Furman, I, I think it all started, of course, they had the big win against my alma mater, yep. the Gamecocks, uh, against South Carolina at home. And then they went on the road and beat Wofford. And I could just feel that this is a different Furman team. And the uh, same thing with Elon, Nate. So, um, you know, uh, don't forget, you know, we have the South Division and the North Division. Right. And the first two teams get that bye. And there's so much yet to be determined. And those byes, we're all playing for a championship. And then the next thing would be the byes. And Furman is right in the hunt for everything right now. So a lot of great basketball being played down the stretch as we, you know, before uh, conference tournaments. We got about three, three, three and a half weeks of regular season basketball. And these games, Nate, will determine the champion, and they'll determine the buys. And Furman is in the mix. And, of course, Furman's here, and Elon's on the road. Yes. Um, so that's a travel situation and stuff like that. Let's look, talk about the NCAA a little bit. Um, Ohio State, the longest winning streak in the country, obviously. They haven't been beaten. But your buddy at Coastal Carolina, Cliff Ellis, has the second longest winning streak in the country and is playing great in the Big South. Everybody talks about there aren't great teams this year. I disagree. I want to get your thoughts. I think just there's a lot of really good teams, and a lot of leagues are very, very even. I mean, are you always saying the Southern Conference, there's no easy outs. Well, you know, people ask me all the time, you know, what affects college basketball the most? And um, obviously, kids leaving early. And it's, it's a problem. And it affects our game. And what saves our game? As these young men leave, we're replenished with some great incoming freshmen. Now, you know, at the mid-division level, you don't have a lot of players um, leaving early for the NBA. It's mostly the high-powered conferences. And, Nate, when these kids leave as freshmen, sophomore, yep. it, it really changes the landscape. Right now, I agree with you, Nate. There is no great team in the, in the country. Obviously, Ohio State um, is undefeated, and Dad Mata is doing a fantastic job. I don't see them going undefeated for the rest of the year. Um, there's been a lot of craziness going on. Michigan State is struggling. Syracuse goes 18-0, then they lose four in a row. Um, they talked about some of the older coaches <laughs> in the country. I have a couple of good friends. Uh, we all, they mentioned uh, Cliff Ellis, former coach at Clemson, at Auburn. And he's doing a fantastic job at Coastal Carolina. Lost in the finals of their um, conference championship yep. and had to settle for an NIT. Coastal Carolina wants to get to the big dance. I have another friend, uh, former head coach of Michigan. You might know Steve Fisher. <laughs> and Steve is at uh, San Diego State. Yep. And holy smokes, he got one loss to BYU with that great scorer. Jimmer Fredette. Jim, Jimmer Fredette. So um, some of these older guys are, are doing all right. But, you know, we all know, what's, we all know where we're headed. We all know we're headed to March Madness. Uh, it, became a very interesting topic about this time last year about expanded. Um, CBS, they needed a partner. And um, they talked about expanding to 96 teams. And me personally, I got very excited. Uh, I thought it would be great. When you have about 340 Division I teams, I, I think we need more than uh, 65. Um, CBS, they picked up a partner out of Atlanta, uh, Turner a great partner with TNT, TBS, and right. so forth. Um, but unfortunately, unfortunately, 
Uh, they, had, they backed away from the 96. There was a lot of um, publicity, uh, negative publicity, that, that it would take away from the great tournament. Right. I disagreed with it. I was a little shocked that some of my fellow coaches kind of felt that, that maybe it was a good point. So instead of going 96, they, uh, we went from 65 to 68. Right, three more. Three more, which means we're going to have another play-in game. But it's coming soon. We're going to talk a lot about it. And that, of course, is March Madness, Final Four, Houston, Texas. And um, so many great things are going to be happening in the last month of regular season uh, basketball. You know, you mentioned Jim Fredette, the number one scorer in the country. Mr. Galdlock's not bad for the College of Charleston. He's in the top five. You coach some great ones, Stephon Marbury, yeah. um, Kenny Anderson, great scorers. People always ask me to ask you, what do they have in common? Nate, it's real simple, Nate. Uh, it's in their blood. They love <laughs> to score the basketball. Uh, Fredette and Godlock, they do a lot of similar things. Yeah. It's, it's great scores. It's great to watch, and it's great to have Mr. Godlock on your team for the yes, rest of this yes, season. We'll be back with a lot more to Bobby Kremen show right after this. Welcome back once again to the Bobby Kremen Show. We just want to kind of recap what's going to come up this week for the Cougars. Cougars will play here in the Carolina First Arena on Saturday at 4 o'clock against the Furman Paladins. And then they have to travel to Elon next Wednesday for another obviously Southern Conference game against Matt Matheny and the Elon Phoenix. Um, It's been a tough week for the Cougar family this week. Um, Our very, very good friend Jeremy Schultz passed away on the 28th and was laid to rest um, on Thursday morning, the day of the, of the Wofford game. And we just want to thank everybody in the community for their help, for their support, and for their love for Jeremy's family um, and everybody involved um, that knew Jeremy. Um, one thing about Jeremy Schultz, um, you, you just can't forget Jeremy. He always brings a laugh to your face when you think about him. And he was a great man and a great friend of the whole Cougar Athletic Department and definitely the Cougar basketball family. We want to thank everybody for watching this week. And Coach Kremens and I will see you next week on The Bobby Kremens Show.